so welcome everybody. I'm Cathy Smith, KPO Lead, Kaizen Promotion Office Lead. And we'll check in at Talford and colleagues um, Rachel and Nick are hosting. So Nick, can you hear us? Yeah, of course. <laughs> you paused there deliberately, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Um, I will come back to the fact that Nick is um, moving on from the KPO team, so this is his last report out in KPO capacity. Um, so, yes, I'm not surprised he's trying to wind us up. Uh, so, welcome to everybody at RSH um, and to those of you in the room. So on the um, agenda this afternoon, we have the magnificent um, away team for this week's RPIW who have been taking us into new territory. They've not only been looking at what's the best way to care for patients with sepsis on AMU, but how do we spread the great work that the value stream um, has been doing over the last 12 months or more across the whole of the trust. Um, and that really will... Um, save lives. We say it every time that we're um, reporting out work with our sepsis um, value stream, but it's absolutely true. And um, I think it'd be worth sort of pausing for a moment when you all fill in that um, staff survey uh, next year and that question about do you contribute to change? You're absolutely contributing to change. So um, make that, um, take a moment to find that survey and fill that in and register. Uh, your contribution because we have um, over 600 staff now using the methodology in a very regular way and um, we're all surprised that this year that the staff survey isn't singing that loudly that we're making that contribution but next year all of us in the room can help to do that um, and so later on we're going to hear about more change and then we've deli been delighted to have Melissa Lynn um, transformational sensei from Virginia Mason with us. She's been in the UK for now three weeks, um, visiting several sites, um, and so looking forward, I know, to going home to family um, this evening. But her contribution to our learning is essential. She does push us hard. Sometimes it's a bit uncomfortable. Um, and so this week, I think some of the message has been about, are we using the methodology to make all of our changes in a respectful way with our staff? Or are we sometimes going back to look for quick wins? And so that can be uncomfortable as we make the transition to getting everybody involved in our changes. But we know we're going to be five times more successful or more likely to be successful if we get ownership and involvement. So I just want to say thank you again um, for taking the time to be part of the week because that's what's going to make it successful. So I'm going to let you tell your story and hand over to our team leads. Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to the report out for this week's Rapid Process Improvement Workshop. My name is Marie Claire Wigley, Kaiser Promotion Office Specialist and I've been workshop lead for this RPIW. We will be reporting out to a cycle time of 15 minutes. The RPIW for this week has been for the sepsis value stream. And the boundaries for the RPIW were from when a patient presents with signs and symptoms of sepsis to when all elements of the sepsis bundle have been delivered. The GEMBA was AMU here at PRH and our team assembled to work on this RPIW includes staff from many different parts of the hospital and Peter, our patient representative whose presence this week has been so very helpful. This fantastic team have used 5S, setup reduction, visual controls and mistake proofing to address the defects and waste in the process. I'll now hand you over to them so they can share their story. Hi, good afternoon. So I'm Richard Stevens, KPO Specialist and the Team Leader for this RPIW. So the target progress report details six metrics. Um, the overall lead time is 69 minutes and we were set a target of 45 minutes. Two quality defects were identified as follows. Percentage of times blood samples are taken to the laboratory by AMU staff. That has a baseline of 60%. Percentage of times all elements of the sepsis bundle are not fully documented in patient notes. That has an 89% defect rate and both these quality defects had a target set of 0%. Productivity gain for the operators in the process has a baseline of 0.4 of a whole time equivalent with a target of 0.2. 5S levels for the AMU blood trolley is level 1 with a target of level 4. And set up reduction for the time spent collecting items required to deliver the sepsis bundle. That was taking 15 minutes and 30 seconds and the target was set of less than 9 minutes. 
The tack time or pace of the work for this process against our daily demand is 360 minutes for our sepsis patients and 72 minutes for all our patients on AMU. The value stream boundaries are from when a patient arrives at AMU with signs of sepsis to when all elements of the sepsis 6 bundle have been addressed. The cycle boxes show the steps in the process, who's involved in each step, and the delays are seen between the steps. Defects and waste can be seen by the Kaizen bursts, and the current value adding time for the patient is 35%. Current process flowchart, that shows the waste in the process in pink, and the red lines denotes defects through the whole process. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm George Kirby. I'm uh, Upper GI and Bariatric Surgery Registrar. So the um, uh, baseline observation shows that there's a 20 minute delay between um, a patient potentially with sepsis being recognised and first medical review um, for that all important uh, confirmation of the diagnosis of sepsis and prescription of fluids and antibiotics. And the transforming care production system demonstrates that this is a waste of both time but also of movement as nurses move around looking for uh, an appropriate doctor. Our sepsis and septic patients are a priority for the trust. We want to make sure that this is escalated from the recurring, referring clinicians through to the accepting team. So we've liaised with the CCC, the Care Coordination Commission, which take the referrals to ask if a patient's being referred with an infection, could this be a potentially septic patient? This is then communicated to the ward and escalated on to the doctors, and we've um, uh, introduced uh, highlights on the communication board for the doctors with red pen and, and uh, other signs. We've discussed with the nurses and the junior and senior doctors how we could escalate to the appropriate cl clinician and we found it would be very welcome to have a designated doctor with um, responsibility for this initial response. So we're going to use the existing SHO bleep. And we've created visual controls so everyone is sure how that these patients are correctly and swiftly escalated to the medical teams. Um, the results show that uh, we've improved the time taken to be reviewed by a clinician uh, and the percent load chart actually shows a reduction of four operators required down to three as having the early attendance of the doctor means that you don't need two nurses to cross-check prescriptions. We're planning further plan, do, study, act cycles um, to look into whether we could routinely use a fast bleed system to escalate septic patients within the trust and whether this would be acceptable to the medical teams. Thank you. Hello, my name's Hannah Adkins and I'm a nurse on AMU at Telford and I'm also the process owner of this RPIW. One of the challenges that we faced was the nursing staff having to run around bloods to the lab um, when no pods were available or when our pod system was unfortunately down. This was taking our nurses away from our patient care. The idea to solve this problem was that having a designated sepsis or emergency pod used only for sepsis and other emergencies, located on top of the pod system with a visual control to ensure that it's replaced after use. We spoke to the estates team who also advised that our pod was going down mainly due to user error. Therefore, we decided to create a user guide and to, pre to prevent the, the, this from happening so often. We tested the emergency pod by sending it back and forth to the lab. Unfortunately, the first time we did this, it ended up in ED. So we did a PDSA and decided to change the writing on the pod and make it bigger and visually more obvious that it belonged to AMU. Our results were that the bloods were received in the lab much quicker and this was less time for the nurses to be off the ward, more time with the patients. The breakdown um, of the pod was trust-wide, so we decided that it would, could be possible that we could roll out this in, um, information booklet um, trust-wide and hopefully reduce the pod breaking down so often. <coughs> okay, hello, my name's Jess Davis. I'm a staff nurse in Theatre Recovery at RSH. Um, it was identified that nurses were spending over 15 minutes to gather all the required equipment to treat just one query septic patient. From this, it was clear through setup reduction we could regain nurses' time. By following the 5S structure, we took a previous um, RPIW uh, number two suggestion of a dedicated sepsis trolley. This idea had already been implemented on SAU at RSH, where they made up a new trolley solely for sepsis. This allowed us to explore the best way to integrate a similar idea um, on AMU at PRH. To test the idea, we engaged with various staff members on AMU to gain ideas about how this would best fit with their current routine. Both home and away teams made the decision together to adapt an existing blood trolley to include all the sepsis equipment. The trolley was developed along with the help of the AMU housekeeper and we were able to use the trolley when a patient presented on the unit with suspected sepsis. 
The results from this showed a big difference in setup reduction um, from 15 minutes to less than one minute. The trolley also provided a visual aid to ensure nothing was missed when working through all elements of the sepsis st uh, structure. Hello, my name is Pavinder. I'm a graduate management trainee. One of our problems was the lack of documentation regarding the delivery of the sepsis bundle. There was no single document which listed all the investigations which needed to be undertaken on a septic patient. Our idea to solve this problem was the use of standard work. We adapted and adopted the sepsis care pathway checklist created in RPIW2, which created a logical flow for the investigations. This form was to be attached to the sepsis trolley. On the back of this form, we added a flowchart to map out the procedure for treating a septic patient. This is the new standard work. We adapted the form for AMU and we tested the use of some sepsis triangles for headboards used in RPIW2 on a real live septic patient. The use of this visual control quickly flagged septic patients to staff. The nurse who was treating this patient was keen to use this. Our results are really positive. It has reduced the time spent looking through no patient notes to assess patients. After having spoken to the housekeeping team, spare forms are to be kept in a dedicated sepsis drawer behind the nursing station. We have also used Kanban, a form of visual control, within this pack to highlight when the, when the folder needs restocking. Good afternoon, my name is Peter and I'm the patient representative. Initially there was no clear idea or process to uh, uh, how to share the learning from the sepsis value streams with the trust in general. So we went out to the wards and in particular we spoke to Lisa, ward manager of Ward 11, Rachel from the delivery suite, Elaine El Elderly Medicine and also the emergency department. They provided great feedback to help us develop our ideas. Also we pulled together all these ideas into a process at a glance and used the seven ways to further the discussion. We returned to the wards to test and gain feedback. All feedback was very positive, which enabled us to develop tools for our sepsis champions and the wider trust. Hello, my name is Rachel and I'm a nurse with a critical care background. We realised that the sepsis champions at present were not being used to their full potential to develop and improve the sepsis care within the trust. So we have worked a lot cross-site um, in lots of areas to recruit more than one champion per area. We have developed a terms of reference for the champions and their managers and we have also created a folder on the shared drive for the champions to access all the learning tools. Using the PDSA cycle we've worked with the sepsis champions to finalise the terms of reference. These terms will encourage the sepsis champions to develop the sepsis care in their own areas um, using the knowledge produced by all of the sepsis RPIWs. Feedback was good with excellent engagement from all areas. However, time allocation off the ward was a problem theme. This is where the idea of the how-to guide was developed. Hello, I'm Brenda Gall. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist at Royal Shrewsbury Hospital. The other problem we faced was how to pull together the work done from previous RPIWs across the trust. But this is a challenge how to share all this information. Using the seven ways innovation exercise and feedback from wards, we decided to create a how-to guide containing the work done from previous RPIW. The guide will be available in a poster format, leaflet, uh, leaflet sorry, and available on the internet to suit all the learners' needs. Once the guide was completed, we went back to the Gamba and other wards to trial the guide and gain feedback. We gained positive feedback from all the areas. The managers and staff were very keen to adopt and adapt the ideas on the guide to their areas to enhance their own delivery of the sepsis bundle. So I'd now like to share with you the results. So three mistake proofing um, the pod system, introduction of a bleep and provision of a sepsis trolley, the lead time has been reduced by 29%. And as a consequence of mistake proofing the introduction of standard work for the pod system, completion of sepsis bundle checklist, both quality defects have been improved by 100% to zero. And our productivity gain is reduced by 30%, freeing up more time for patient care. Following 5S of the blood trolley and change of use of a sepsis trolley, the 5S level has improved to a level 2. Setup reduction has been reduced by 94%. 
The team has worked extremely hard this week on two fronts. Firstly, learning from previous RPIWs to implement all changes you've heard about to improve delivery of the sepsis bundle on AMU. And secondly, to establish a method for sharing the learning from previous RPIWs. I'm extremely proud of the way the team worked together and supported each other throughout the week, particularly around the sharing, to deliver a very good method that we are confident will promote and speed up the spread of learning around the trust through our champions. The future state value stream shows the improvements we have made this week have eliminated most of our Kaizen bursts and by introducing a sepsis trolley we have eliminated the cycle box by bringing all elements required to the patient with the nurse and doctor both working together to complete the sepsis bundle. The future at a glance shows us that we have reduced this process and considered all elements of mistake proofing. Introdu introduction of a skills map will also help to identify training gaps to enable all nursing staff to, com to commence the bundle and reduce our overall lead time. Despite some staffing issues this week, the home team on AMU have been extremely supportive and helpful, um, offering great feedback and support to test our ideas. The work continues beyond this week. My role as a process owner and lead sepsis champion, supported by a HCA Stuart on AMU as my co-champion, is to help embed the changes that we have made through implementation, learning elements within AMU, as well as working with the KPO team and the Value Stream sponsor team to spread the learning through, throughout the trust with a how-to guide given to the other champions. I will work through the newspaper over the next 30 days and re-measure our metrics at 30, 60 and 90 days, which I will look forward to sharing with you. This week has reinforced the benefits of learning from others. The team have developed the work that had taken place in the previous RPIWs and made it relevant to AMU. We're grateful for the hard work of the previous RPIW team so that this week we have been able to make so much progress so quickly. The importance of using the sepsis champions for the sharing of learning across the trust was a clear message that came out of this week. It's easy to instruct people in how to make improvements or show them, however giving them the opportunity to truly get involved will give understanding and longevity to the rollout of the sepsis learning. We have many people to thank this week. Firstly the away team, they have been brilliant to work with, I have absolutely loved seeing the friendships and fun that have come alongside the hard work that they have done. The home team on AMU have been very patient and responsive, giving their feedback in their very busy working environment. Thank you too to Richard for being a wonderful team lead this week. I admire his drive and the way he supports the team. Finally, thank you to Edwin, our sponsor, for setting challenging targets and offering his support this week of the team. And also thank you to all the people on our um, sheet here. It's a tragedy that every year across the United Kingdom at least 44,000 people die of sepsis. And it's more of a tragedy because we know how to save at least some of those people. And here at SAF, through the work that we've been doing through our RPIWs, through our Transforming Care Institute, We've learned how to implement changes that our own teams have developed, that our own teams have taken ownership for to implement in their own specific areas. So the challenge to the team for this week has actually been twofold. On the one hand, working with the home team of PRH AMU, which was the very first team to do an RPIW in sepsis, how can they learn from the other teams? How could they join the dots? How could they bring together in their gamba all of the elements that would work for their team, for their patients, and for their environment? And the second challenge to the team was what could they learn at the higher level? How could they share the key principles of one gamba learning and derive those principles that would apply to other teams and other gambas. And how could we spread that learning more rapidly? 
because it's great that our patients in AMU at PRH are now going to have the benefit of all of this learning coming together. But I'm also thinking about all of the patients with sepsis throughout the trust and how quickly we can take what we've learned and what we already know and save more lives. You've just heard from the members of the team the extraordinary work that they've done. And I don't use that word often, extraordinary. They really have surpassed my expectations. And I say this having chatted with each of them during the course of the week. Well done, team. Um, they've not only worked with AMU that's been extraordinarily busy, but they've respectfully engaged with the team there and throughout the site to both work with the AMU team to bring in all of those elements and connect the dots, provide a full pathway for care, but then also learn what will apply elsewhere. Team, the work you've done truly will help to save lives. Thank you.
seeing a reduction in overnight hospital admissions and the improvement of patient experience. The opportunities for growth in this area are immense, but in order for this to happen, we need a clear dedicated workforce. So I'd just like to say a few thank yous. I'd also like to thank the KPO team for their support. Um, the exact engagement support we've had has been amazing. Obviously, a big thank you to our sponsor. Um, and then, of course, the whole away team. So, you know, their hard work and dedication would not achieve as much as we have. Thank you. I'm Mark Cheatham. I'm a consultant surgeon. I'm part of the sponsor for this archive. Uh, ambulatory emergency care is like day surgery, but for medicine. Wouldn't dream of trying to do modern day surgery out with a bespoke unit with a consultant surgeon and consultant anaesthetist. At the moment, our current provision of ambulatory emergency care has been done on a shoestring, and despite that, we've managed to do some amazing things over a three day RPIW. I think the team were really disappointed on the Monday of the week where it looked like the whole week might be cancelled because, uh, because of patient flow and staffing pressures. But we managed to rebuild and, and carried out a, a short focused Kaizen event over three days which has had a huge impact. We've proven that we can protect this area. There were a lot of naysayers on the Monday saying you'll never ever protect it. We might do one night but we've done it for the whole week so we can carry on doing that. Ambulatory emergency care is in everyone's interest, particularly those patients who are involved in it, but actually it frees up beds for those patients who, who, who truly need it. So this is a patient safety, it's about patient experience, and this is a must do. In the future, I can see that we will have in the trust a large, dedicated, multi-specialty ambulatory emergency care unit. Before we get to that, we have to get our processes in order, and Emma has shown that we can do that in a very short space of time. So thank you very much to the team. We've worked really hard in really difficult circumstances over that week. But what you did in three days was truly amazing. Thank you. Hello everybody. Um, I know some of your faces, uh, but it's always lovely to see new faces joining us on our journey here through the Transforming Care Production System. Um, uh, as you know, my time here in the next three years or so is uh, changed a little bit from participating in the RPIWs, coaching for the RPIWs, and uh, doing the Lean for Leaders work, and now really having opportunities on a quarterly basis to come stop by and provide support, um, provide the challenge um, on how we can continue to be brave through our transformation journey. So um, I'm just going to use a couple of depictions to kind of help tell um, my story about what I've been talking about over the last five days here at SAF. Um, I got a lot of questions about, are we there yet? We're just past the two year mark um, in our lifelong journey. Um, through the transforming care production system and, and I got this multiple times some with, uh, with excitement <sighs> there's so many great things that we're seeing um, really fantastic bright spots across the trust um, I also got this question with anxiety and concern are we there yet when are we going to see it um, when are we going to truly feel that this is actually working because I'm starting to get worried um, on behalf of our staff on behalf of our medics um, there's an interesting um, tension on how this question was posed during the conversations that I had this week. So um, I'd just like to, to point out a, a few things and um, offer this next quote, which is um, what I would like you to think about, which is uh, from Manja Gide, <coughs> a Nobel Prize winner, man cannot discover new oceans unless he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. I feel like we're at the part of the, the shore where we're covered by three feet of water. And it feels great. We're splashing around. We feel like we're, we've got a lot of activity. You see the froth in the waves. Um, but we haven't been able to get ourselves away from, from the shore. Um, and that part of that is a lot of the fear that goes from being able to let go of our old habits, what feels comfortable. Um, what has gotten me here after the last 10, 20, 30 years of my own personal leadership, of my own personal development um, as a nurse, as an executive, etc. So 
I want you to use this quote to imagine, imagine an ocean where it's full of improvement ideas. All of those drops create an ocean. And we have that potential here. We have so many beautiful ideas. I've seen it, I've heard it, um, even uh, just passing through the hallways and hearing conversations with domestics, uh, teams, uh, hearing it from the volunteers and what bright ideas that they have. There's so many ideas that are here at SATH. Think about your staff as the school of fish. They're swimming in the right direction, they're swimming together because we have a shared knowledge base. We have the transforming care production system in our wheelhouse. We have the respect for people principles to really guide us through how do we interact with each other, how do we engage and do it respectfully, with kindness, with excitement of being able to approach new ideas. And then just think about the warmth of the water. That's, that's the warmth of the respect for people. And being able to look at each other and say, thank you for being able to walk in my shoes, because as a patient, that has been difficult for me. To not hear people understand what my experience truly was, but being able to take that information and to be able to incorporate it into the improvements that we've done. To be able to say that, you know, I took a step back, and I said, you know what, I recognize that I didn't listen to understand. I was very, very quick to defend my own position without actually truly hearing what you were trying to tell me. So use that ocean uh, anal analogy to truly think about um, where we can start to embrace that water. Uh, and, and so what is it? What is it about this? How do we gain that courage to lose sight of the shore? And is it really about addressing our fears? The other side of fear is freedom. The freedom to be able to empower our staff to come up with the ideas and really come through with the solutions. It's the freedom to say that, you know, the work that I've done, the leadership that has gotten me here today, may no longer be fit for purpose in the 21st century, and that's okay. The fear that I may be imperfect, and how do my colleagues, how do my um, supervisors, how does my team look to me? Is it okay for me to be imperfect? So I ask you to embrace your fears, and part of that is about self-reflection, holding up that mirror. I talked about reflection last time I was here and to look inwards and think about what exactly is it that I'm doing to change my behaviors. Even if it's a small little incremental step, it's still something that is actionable, something that is visible, to see that, that I'm trying, trying to, to tr improve myself and to be patient with me, with me because I am also human and I am also imperfect. Okay. So, with that, I'll just leave it to uh, Martin Luther King to really just close, um, because we are going through the, the friction of our journey now. And this is really where we can have a lot of fun. It's gonna be very difficult, and it will require courage, um, but it will be worth it at the end. So Martin Luther King says, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then just crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. This is the challenge now for us at SAH. Do we keep moving forward or do we go back to what we used to be comfortable? And clearly what was comfortable before, what we used to do before is no longer possible. It's no longer helpful to us. And so truly the only answer for us to move forward. Okay. So thank you so much for the whole week. Really appreciate it, really loved the conversations and the transparency and the open, honest conversations that we had. And I think we have so much to work with here. Um, and it just gives me so much courage and so much hope um, for the future for all of you. Thank you. Just, just before I, um, I start to uh, make a, draw a few reflections from what I've heard today, um, I, I can't lose the opportunity to, uh, to not say a few words um, for Nick. So Nick, can, can you do me a favour and just move up onto the stage because you're hiding off camera at the moment. Yeah, yeah, come on Nick. 
my, Come on. my revenge, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Unaccustomed as you are to public speaking. Yeah. 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 So I think you've, you've got your son in the audience there as well, I think, uh, today, have you, Nick? Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm, I'm sure he's very proud of his dad. So, <laughs> so if, I, if I can say, when I, when I joined the Trust, one of the, um, the things that came across very, very clearly at the time was Nick's enthusiasm for, um, for change, for improvement. And uh, with his inclusion in our journey with Virginia Mason, uh, we've really seen you develop and, and mature that learning, Nick, and the manner in which you go about and have shared that with our teams. And uh, I'm very proud of you and, and, and looking at you and, and what, you're, what you've become over that two-year journey, but what you will with the journey that's ahead of you with NHS Improvement. And I know that you will do an outstanding job there. And that's, of course, preparing the ground for when you return to SAF. <laughs> As everybody does, I'm reliably told, everybody returns to Sam, um, and I'm sure that you will do so. But can I, can I take this opportunity to thank you for all your hard work in terms of not only the work that we've done with Virginia Mason and our improving care, but also the, the larger footprint of change that you've been involved with with our organisation for many years now, and you will definitely be missed. So we're delighted for you but sad for ourselves. So all the very best, and we'll have an opportunity to chat before your last days, but um, all the very best uh, from us all with, with our warmest thoughts. Um, if, if I can just, um, just refer to my notes uh, for a couple of things, just in terms of what I've heard today. So, can, can I start by saying that, um, you know, Edwin's right, we were chatting this morning about the patients that present in A&E, and Edwin quite rightly reminded me that we get a lot of patients with sepsis that come in. And, um, and I've, in, in the conversations with staff, it's surprising how often you hear them talk about a family member, a loved one, who's had sepsis. And when we hear the, uh, those sort of really terrifying statistics about often the very tragic outcomes for patients, we realise just how important this work is. So we, we heard from Melissa about, you know, the, the point about where are we on this journey. Well, I, what I would say is this, that we're, we're, we're at a point where we are making a difference. And that's what you've done this week. Your actions will make a difference. So if we look at the evidence, the evidence that talks about intervention with an hour, for patients with sepsis, and you're now doing it in 49 minutes. If I tell you when we started this journey, it was five hours. Five hours. And if you talk to other hospitals in the NHS, I can tell you virtually nobody is doing it in an hour. So that's a fantastic you know, turnaround for us and an improvement for our patients who, who are at their most vulnerable when they're in your arms with, with that condition. So that's fantastic. There are a few things that really stood out for me um, first of all, wanted to thank Peter for, for his time. Um, and it is so important for us now that we have our patients involved in all the changes that we make. And I'm sure you saw the value of Peter being present throughout that. And we, we need to make sure we're doing that with everything. So thank you again for that. That's really, really great. Um, when, when you put up the thank yous, there were 31 names, I think, on that list. And when you were chatting about where, you've, where you all work in the organisation, um, again, if I come back to where we are now, well, where we are now is that we're truly doing multidisciplinary learning about how we change the way that we care for our patients. And that's illustrated by the, the different parts of our organisation that you all come from in terms of your areas of expertise, but also the names on that list and the people that have been helping on our journey with sepsis. Um, if I can also just, just add a couple of other, other things, it was lovely to hear you talking about using the innovation tools. So when we talk about our journey, well part of our journey is what happens when we come up against a barrier, a challenge? What do we do? Well in the past what we did was we, we extended our finger and we pointed at folk. That's what the NHS used to do, didn't it? It had this wagging finger that used to wander around pointing. If one of the things that we've done, if one of the really important steps we've taken is to say, well, I know what we could do. We could use seven ways or six hats or five whys. If we start to use those tools to really lift our minds into a different place to try and overcome those hurdles, then we are going to make profound differences 
Wagging our finger and telling people does not instill confidence or change. Using innovations to really help the teams understand how they can solve these tricky problems does. So it was lovely to hear you talking about using those skills, so well done, that was really good. A um, couple of other bits, um, the pods, there's, there, we, get, we get a lot about myth, myths in our organisation, lots of hospitals have myths, so one of the myths is that the pod system is rubbish, it breaks down all the time. Well, interesting, isn't it? So what we often now are finding is that it's the way we use the pod system which is breaking it. So the pod system can be a great asset to us if we use it properly. And what you've shown today is that with some simple uh, education for us all, we can actually make that more reliable and, and help to use it. And using, you know, sending blood through the, through the pods using the plastic ampules rather than the glass is, is, you know, is a measure of these sorts of things which we've seen as well. So, um, so that's really, really um, positive. So I, I can see huge opportunities for us to take the learning forward, not just for sepsis, but for other rollouts from the approach that you've taken. And um, it, it, you've really achieved a tremendous amount. So I wanted to really congratulate you for that work. Um, you've, you've really achieved a huge journey, I think, this, you know, in this week's RPIW. So well done, well done. Um, uh, Emma, I wanted to just um, just just check in with with something with you. I don't know whether you can hear me okay over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. excellent. Um, was it five avoidable admissions a day that you said you 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 were, you'd achieved with the work? Yes. Five five. That's fantastic, isn't it? If we think about the biggest blight that we have at the moment in our organisation is boarding. Everybody in our organisation detests the idea of boarding. And if we stop and think for a moment that if we support Emma and her team to be able to actually deliver that ambulatory pathway both on both of our sites, if we do that and we could save five patients from coming into our hospital on each site, ten patients, that's more or less half the boarding. Half the boarding would stop just because we did that. Well, don't we need to do that? So, so, they, so one of the things that I will commit to is when I leave today, we will talk very seriously now about the steps that we will be taking to underwrite those changes because we're creating some of our own problem with the way that we're going about doing this and we're not allowing those teams to be able to deliver the care that they need to. So we need to take that and I, I need to, to own that along with um, the, the executive team. So we'll, we'll do that, won't we, Edwin? We'll, we'll own that and we'll make a change with that one. So there you go, Emma. That, there's one, one commitment for you. Um, I also wanted to, to call out, Emma, the fact that um, it was a very difficult week. We, we were hoping that spring had arrived and it felt like winter was, was coming for version two, didn't it? And um, to be able to then compress that learning over three days um, because of those pressures and to achieve what you have is remarkable and I think what it, it does illustrate is the understanding and the depth of that understanding to be able to make that adjustment and make it work so it, it is a, a really timely reminder for us that sometimes we do have to make changes to the way that we do things but it doesn't need to um, impact on the outcomes that we get so um, so well done Emma and the team you, you've achieved a great deal in a very short space of time so if I can just um, leave you with one thought on the, um, one of the hardest things I think in the NHS is that we, you know, those of us that have worked in it a long time, you grow up and you learn to, to work in a certain way. And what we're learning with Virginia Mason is that there is a different, there's a better way. There is a different way. And I'm, I'm, I'm old enough to remember that we used to do this. We used to actually work like this. And we've lost our way, I think. We've forgotten what it means to actually rely on each other, to trust each other, and to actually work together to deliver these important changes. And I think the great joy of this work, which won't be achieved in two years, or four, or five, it's a, it's a lifelong journey, this, for us. But what it is teaching us is to have confidence and trust in each other again. And that is a wonderful outcome. If we learn nothing else, that is a wonderful outcome. So. The unlearning of some of those bad habits is something that we really need to hang on to. So um, that's certainly something that I'm reflecting upon on how do we continue to challenge those things and move into a different space. 
So we'll continue to do that. And my, my final reflection is how important it is for people to be able to hear the work and the outcomes that, that we get when we do report outs like this. And whilst it's lovely to see you know, the people in the room, and I'm delighted that you're here, we need to find a way of extending this conversation to much more of our people, don't we? So I think one of the things that we should commit to do, Cathy, is a bit of a, um, a PDSA on, on how might we do that? What would be the best way for us to be able to share the message? So um, rather than necessarily looking at it through the lens of what we've been doing, um, in terms of either the time or the day or whatever, let's, let's explore that conversation with all of our people and find out what would be the absolute best way to try and get the room filled with folk mm -hmm. so that they can celebrate and hear the messages as we have today from the wonderful things you've achieved. So we, we could maybe have a look yeah, at that. Yeah. Okay, well enough from me. So um, thank you very much. We've got some certificates, I think, to give out. Yeah. So well done now, Emma and the team, and well done the sepsis cool. team here as well. Everybody has um, a lovely weekend. The weather is kind to us. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.